What if there was a technology that could help us become dramatically happier? Now, I'm not talking about the kind of happiness that you may feel when you buy something new. I mean the kind of happiness that gives our lives fulfillment and purpose. For example, maybe some of you have had a child, and you've felt the transformative power of loving another human being unconditionally. Or maybe you've poured yourself into a project and you've seen what you can create when you're fully connected with yourself and when you trust yourself. These are the types of things that give us fulfillment and meaning in life. Now, can a technology give us more of that? Well, it turns out the good news is there is a technology that can do that. It's called mindfulness meditation. Now, mindfulness simply means paying attention on purpose to the present moment. By paying attention on purpose over and over, you begin to gain the power of using your attention like a specific scientific tool. You can think of it like a microscope for your attention that allows you to zoom into your experience so you can see it in its rich detail. Now, I'm sure you've heard about mindfulness. It's been all over the place in the last decade, and some of the claims are true. The science is suggesting that it can help you do things like lower your blood pressure and your overall stress. It can increase your attentional focus, and it can even make you less emotionally reactive. Now, because of these benefits, mindfulness works beautifully as an intervention for certain disorders like chronic pain or addiction. But how can that make you happier? Well, let me give you an example from my own life. I have, like many people, one of those anxious minds, you know, the kind that's constantly ruminating about everything and worrying about things that it has no business worrying about. And on some level, I think I assumed that that worry was necessary for my success. I identified with it. So you can imagine what it was like for me to try to meditate for the first time. I sat and focused on my breath, and immediately I felt some tension in my chest, which made me feel like something is wrong, I'm doing something wrong, which caused anxiety and fear, which caused me to resist it. And then I tried to bring my attention back to my breath, which now there's more tension. And I thought, screw that, I'm not going to do that. It's supposed to make me better, and it's making me more anxious. So then I tried it again and again for months. And finally, I gained the skill of being able to just watch what was going on up here. And when I did that, I noticed something very important, that that chain, that pattern that I was talking about was completely automatic. I had no control over it. And so as my attention became more like a microscope and I could zoom into my experience, I saw that there was a tiny fleeting bit of space in between those links. So in between the moment when I felt that tension in my chest and when the fear arose, there was a little bit of space. And as I zoomed into that space, I found freedom. I found the freedom to bring my attention back to the current moment, so I wasn't so washed away by all that negative emotion and stuff that was going on in my body. And as a result of this, it just didn't have so much power over me. I had the power and the choice to just bring my attention back to the moment so I could create the states of my body and the states of my mind that just made me feel okay. And after I did this for years and years, eventually I started feeling some fulfillment just by ordinary moments in life and a little bit of happiness instead of that anxiety all the time. So that's how meditation can make you happier. The problem is, that meditation takes immense effort, at least in my experience and I think in most people's experience. To be honest, we just don't have the time to sit around and devote our lives to meditation like a monk. If you did, you would experience the good stuff over time. You'll do what I did. You'll spend 10 minutes a day here or there, and I think you should do that because you will get some, some, you will get some good benefits from that. But what if we can make meditation rewarding quicker. Then you'd experience the good stuff early on, and you'd be more likely to keep going until the life-changing effects kick in. And think about the clinical implications. 
If we could reduce the time it takes to treat something like chronic pain with mindfulness, we'd be reducing the suffering in a lot of people. So with that in mind, I've been trying to find ways to combine modern technology with the old technology of meditation so we can boost the effects. We're calling this a techno boost. So think about a rocket booster. It gets a rocket into space extremely fast. And that's the idea with the techno boost. It should accelerate the benefits of mindfulness quickly. But in the ideal case, it should also do that without causing any negative effects. So no less than the Dalai Lama has been calling for this for some time. I was lucky enough to be in the audience when he said this for the first time. Now, this was at the Society for Neuroscience meeting, which is a giant conference of brain scientists, 30,000 brain scientists. Now, for someone who's a little bit anxious, this is the worst place to hang out. <laughs> I don't recommend it. But I had to go because I was a young neuroscience student. And I saw him say something that changed the course of my life. He said, if those brain scientists in that room could come up with an intervention that could accelerate the benefits of meditation so he didn't have to meditate for so long himself, he'd be the first to sign up. Now, this was controversial in Buddhism and in science, but it got me deeply interested in meditation. That's why I started meditating for the first time. And as I, as I saw these effects in myself, I started wondering, well, is there a tech that could do what the Dalai Lama is talking about? It turns out that there is a new technology coming out called low-intensity focused ultrasound. It's a brand new tech. It only exists in a few labs right now. And this technology works off of ultrasound. You know ultrasound is that imaging modality that allows you to see babies in the womb. It turns out that you can focus ultrasound through the human skull and you can modulate the brain. This is called non-invasive brain stimulation. Several research labs have recently shown that you can do this in humans with the same amount of energy or even less than they use to image a fetus in the womb. So we have a good idea that it's safe to do and it's temporary, it just modulates the brain for a short amount of time. Now, I started doing experiments when I was in graduate school with this technology. We showed that you could modulate the brain and make people feel happier, which then is leading to a treatment for depression, perhaps, and maybe even anxiety. And we also showed that by targeting a part of the brain that is involved when you first learn to meditate, called the anterior cingulate, you can actually ultrasound that part of the brain for just 30 seconds, and you can make people feel more mindful on a mindfulness scale. So this was a clue. Maybe this would be the useful technology that the Dalai Lama was talking about. But this wasn't a techno boost. The people in the lab felt just a little bit more mindful. This was sort of like a nudge in the right direction, not a boost. While I was working on these experiments, a very well-known meditation teacher named Shenzhen Young was also thinking about focused ultrasound as a techno boost. Now, Shenzhen has a real mind for science. If you ever got to meet him, he'd talk your ear off about general theory of relativity or abstract mathematics for hours and hours, as he has with me. And when I met Shenzhen for the first time, he told me about this truly fascinating disorder called athymhormia. Now, patients who get athymhormia have a very severe disorder of consciousness. Basically, they get damage in a circuit in their brain that's been very well defined, and they become fully immersed in the present moment. Sounds like a good thing, right? Well, this is too immersed in the present moment. It's a dysfunction. And let me give you an example of one of the patients. She found herself in the sun, and this is a very fair-skinned person. She sat in the sun for all day and got an extreme sunburn, almost a third-degree sunburn, which you can get if you're fair-skinned. When she was in the ER, the doctor said, why didn't you just move out of the sunlight? And she said, well, I felt the pain. It was the worst pain I've ever experienced. But for some reason, there was no suffering to go along with it pain or no pain, it's all the same to me, she said. It's just another fact, like the birds singing outside. And so it seems like what's happening is that she has no resistance to the pain signal and she has no grasping onto it, not even enough grasping onto it to realize she needs to move out of the sun. So, of course, this is a disorder. I'm not about to tell you that this is what we're going to do to people with ultrasound. 
But to Shenzhen's trained eye as a meditation teacher, this was like a caricature of what happens to people who meditate over the long term. And so we thought, well, is this a clue about where we can stimulate in the brain with low intensity focused ultrasound? We decided to design an experiment to find out. Our hypothesis was that targeting that part of the brain and down regulating it while people meditate should make them more fluid so they can sink into the meditation practice quicker and get the benefits quicker. Now, we gave this experiment about a one in a million chance of working. A lot had to go right. And, you know, to be, to be frank, we just thought this was going to be a fun experiment to do in the lab, and then we can both move on and do something else. But just in case it worked, it was going to accelerate someone quickly. And so we wanted someone with a lot of meditation experience, just in case they go deep. So Shenzhen signed up. Let me walk you through what this looks like. Since focused ultrasound is so focal, you have to get an image of the brain, an MRI. And you can see on the screen that we mark the part of the brain that we're targeting with a little red dot. Now, we feed that image into a computer called a neuro navigation system. Basically, the computer has a little camera that tracks the person's head in space, and it's got their brain image in the computer. And so it tells us exactly where to put the device on their head. You can see Shenzhen wearing it here. Now, that funny little thing on his head, that's so the camera can see him. And basically, Shenzhen wore this and got ultrasound twice a week for two weeks. Now, he's meditating for about an hour and a half, but he's getting small doses of ultrasound throughout that time. And to our surprise, he said it made him go deep into his meditation. He said it gave him less resistance and less grasping, just more fluidity, just as we had hoped for. Okay, so then we got excited and we said, maybe it's one in 10,000 that this is going to work. This is still just one person. So Shenzhen went for another week. And then he said it gave him one of the most significant effects he's ever had with meditation. Now, this is saying a lot because Shenzhen has been meditating for 50 years and he's already a very happy person. So I think this has already worked on him. So then we thought, okay, we have to replicate this. This is one person. So then we got 12 advanced meditation practitioners to sign up for the experiment. Now, you have to understand that some of these people were pretty skeptical about this. You know, they've been meditating on average 30 years apiece. And they said, why are you going to put this funny device on my head? I already know how to meditate. This isn't going to help. They all went through four days of this intervention. And within the fourth day, every single one of them experienced the same thing Shenzhen did. Less resistance, less grasping, more fluidity, and just sort of diving deeper into the meditation practice quicker. Now, some of them said it actually gave them insights. The types of things that normally occur after you've been meditating for a long time, like on a retreat. And it's these insights that typically lead to long-term happiness with meditation. So, have we found a techno boost for meditation? Well, we don't know. This is only a pilot study. These are 13 people. But this does give us hope that a techno boost is within reach and possible. Now we have to do the hard work. We're developing a scientific paradigm in my lab so we can study the neurological and the psychological effects, especially the effects over the long term, because we want to make sure people can be pushed in the direction of well being and happiness instead of some other direction. And then, once this paradigm is designed, we want to know whether people who have less experience, you know, maybe 20 years or 10 years, also get the experience of a boost. And then finally, can we take people who've never experienced before and help them see these benefits faster? If a techno boost for mindfulness is found, it's going to have huge impacts on people's lives. It's going to help the rest of us experience the effects of meditation so we can continue with the practice until we feel those life-changing effects. And if you think about the clinical implications, they could be even bigger. So it is my hope that we begin to use technology skillfully so we can create the conditions for human flourishing instead of using technology to take us in the opposite direction. Take the rocket boost analogy a little bit further. As you know, to get a rocket into space, all the conditions have to be just right. It is a well 
tuned science. A techno boost for meditation is going to be the same. If it is properly tuned, it could help us dramatically change our inner worlds so we can effectively change our outer worlds. Thank you.